prefabricated structures so in this part uh, in this lecture we are going to discuss about the fourth unit and uh, you can see the title it we are going to discuss about the joints and connection which is involved in the prefabricated uh, structural members and the syllabus for this unit is attached below so you are going to discuss about the joints and connections based upon the action of force and also the functions and uh, uh, types of structural connection that uh, that is mean by uh, beam to column connection or column to column beam to beam column to foundation so these things will be discussed in this unit and after finishing this unit you will gain information about the types of walls which are used in the precast construction and the C lens and also the design of joints so joint so here we are going to discuss about the joints in this you can see that a joint is an action of force okay either due to the compression tension or shear it between two or more structural elements through an intermediate medium okay so it either may be a rubber steel or grout and the behavior of this joint will depend on how much the intermediate uh, intermediate medium differs from the parent concrete uh, when we are going to combine two or more structural elements then in that particular uh, place at the center of the place uh, we are going to combine the two structural elements in that part we need to give some intermediate medium or bearing pads uh, whatever it may be needed so it can be either rubber steel or grout so this is a separate part it is a material place and if the force is acting on that place then if it is a compressive force then it is said to be a compression joint and it is a tensile fo force then it is said to be a tensile joint same way for shear and flexure also so we will discuss this on next slide so it is a uh, based on the action of force so here you have listed out compression joint tensile joint shear and flexure and torsional joints so compression joint is we know that where the compression force is acting on the structural element and we are going to joint the members then it said to be in compression joint it can be transmitted the uh, load or uh, any uh, things uh, in, going to be transmitted between the parent concrete and the intermediate medium so it can be done by di direct bearing that is bearing pads rubber pads or through an intermediate medium if you are going to intermediate medium intermediate medium means we are going to give in situ mortar or fine concrete or bearing pads it is for uh, uh, direct bearing uh, bearing pads or any other bearing elements this is for compression joint now we are going to tensile joint tensile we know that we are going to yield the bars so it can be occurred in the site conditions also uh, either it may be a lapping or it can be a loops so we uh, we need to transfer the loads okay uh, so in the tension place we need to choose the material which is better in ductile and which carries the structure in integrated way and also prevent from the progressive collapse we need to choose according to that and then shear joints so shear joints have some several factors we need to follow those considerations and depending upon the um, places we can choose any one of the following so adhesion or friction at the joint interface and shear keys are provided at the joint ends and double actions Uh, while you are going to uh, connect the beam and column uh, if we are going to place with the doubles because at column we know the shear will act upon okay so not column uh, while you are uh, going to join the beam and co column at that place we have some more moments and also the shear will be maximum at that point we can use doubles at their places to avoid the shear cracks so at that place is also said to be a shear joint and also it is uh, shear frictions also need to be resisted okay so this is for shear joints and we are going to discuss about the flexure and torsional so we know that torsional is a twisting moment so here the moment resisting connections are generally used for column to foundation connection and also beam to column connection okay and uh, what are the things uh, what are uh, things which is used for joining the flexure and uh, torsional places means grouting it is a common procedure which is followed uh, in this joint and also bolting or welding will be carried 
and also the anchor distill details okay so this is all set up with then uh, force okay based on the anchor and then we are moving on to the next slide that is based on function so before we are discussed about based on the force now it is on function so construction joint it is provided at where the construction is stopped either at end of a day or any other reason so you are going to carry the work for next day in that places uh, the concrete in which is poured before and after will be deferred so in that place where it going to be started that is said to be a construction joint okay it ensure the conformity between the past work and the new one and uh, second one is expansion joint it is an temperature variations at the site okay it shows the temperature variation at site and this joints are provided in all concrete surface generally it is provided in all concrete surface you can see it in a bridge deck slabs and also in um, highways uh, or sidewalks okay so it is provided with the length which exceeds 12 meter okay in that places it should be provided because the concrete is uh, vary varies from the temperature either it can expand or contract okay so then contraction joint it controls the cracking happening due to shrinkage to avoid the shrinkage or shrinkage cracks we in generally uh, we place some crew um, play uh, grooves okay to avoid these type of cracks which is forming in the concrete so that that does said to be in contraction joint and then we are moving on to the next one that is important one is expansion joint so expansion joint is generally done due to the heat induced okay and uh, you can see the right hand side in this image you can see uh, the two deck slab is been connected and that particular place there will be some joint medium so that is said to be an expansion joint or contraction joint depends upon the concrete's behavior it can be expanded or it can be contracted okay so this medium is not only provided for absorbing the heat transmission uh, sorry heat induced but also to the absorb mechanical vibration and also the rare settlement which occurs and also some ground movements okay and this is commonly seen in the sidewalks bridges railway tracks and piping system and other structures so these are said to be an these are comes under the expansion joint now we are going to uh, discuss about the design part so for everything we need uh, some specification some guidelines to prepare and uh, to be an uh, good standardized value so he, same way here in uh, design of expansion joint we need to prepare uh, an expansion joint application okay and the design specifications and we need to care some things we need to uh, bring attention in particular uh, items so that has been discussed in the uh, below part so that is uh, when this system should be reviewed okay to determine the location and type of expansion joint you need to uh, you need to choose according to the location and type of expansion joint so this is the preliminary part while you are going to consider for the design for the expansion joint you need to know the location and also type of expansion joint which type you are going to be provided and for which application that is also an important okay and then uh, availability of supporting structure for anchoring and grouting of the system and the direction of uh, direction and magnitude of thermal movements to be absorbed must be considered and when selecting same way here also they are saying the previous one the type and location of expansion joint and then normally normally in expansion joint they use rubber as an intermediate medium so that is said to be a conventional rubber expansion joint here also uh, we are going to design with the conventional rubber expansion joint then what are the application what are the special things which this rubber expansion will resist so that is thermal movement and mechanical vibration okay and it also deal with various forces on the joint they require fiber reinforcement 
which guarantees both flexibility and strength so we have previously discussed about the rubber as an intermediate medium in some places the fiber is also used as an reinforcement it gives you some flexibility and also the strength okay then we are uh, going with the next point that is conventional expansion joint or reinforced using prefabricated fiber piles and then use of these prefabricated uh, fiber piles uh, or uh, fabric piles uh, makes it impossible to control the orientation of the fibers uh, in shapes uh, uh, such as below the expansion joint so there are, there have some disadvantage while you go for uh, um, conventional expansion joints along with the fibers so that will be discussed in the next slide so while using the fibers along with the rubber it um, naturally brings the cost more and also we need more fibers and also more rubber is needed and uh, while you go going for fiber then uh, additional metal reinforcement rings also needed okay so this is also comes in the disadvantage and uh, while combining the conventional system and this fi fabric piles then it gives the result as a lower performance we need to follow some certain percentage then only it gives the uh, best results and it is also a less flexible one and uh, the expansion which is uh, due to under pressure will be in radial and also in axial so these are disadvantages and then we are moving on to the last part that is design of uh, expansion joint so here uh, we are uh, listed out some five things okay that is basic dimension nominal thickness uh, sorry nominal dimension actual planning model and modular grid so basic is nothing but we are going to give some basic dimension uh, the dimensions between the axes are defined as the dimensional grid so here it is defined by dimensional grid that is due to the uh, dimensions between the axes and um, generally we follow coordinate system of reference line same way that defines the layout of the building so here the basic dimensions follow the two dimensional coordinate system of reference lines it, it is said to be a layout okay and then we are uh, moving on to the next one nominal or theoretical dimension so nominal or theoretical dimension is a planned dimension first we need to know that it is a planned dimension and it is arrived from the basic dimension and joints from the previous one and also along with the joints and then we are moving on to the third one that is actual dimension so here the dimensions are produced okay uh, the dimensions are produced with the sorry without cutting or altering in the site so that is the second point so next one is planning module and uh, in this it is said to be in multiple of the basic module right so multiple we know what is meant by basic module and also the multi module so that is being discussed here and uh, it is uh, used for specified applications only okay it is used for specified application um, normally uh, when um, length of the dimension varies uh, so there the multi uh, multiple of the basic model will be carried and then modular grid so modular grid is nothing but uh, uh, two dimensional coordinate system of reference line we need we need to know what is meant by modular so modular is nothing but it is a reference line okay so it is a reference lines and uh, the multi module which is discussed previous so it is also discussed here the multi module may be same or different for each of the two dimension of the reference system the area between the model lines is called as modular okay so that is said to be a modular grid and uh, it uh, when you follow these procedures and um, under the design of uh, expansion joint uh, it it becomes easier in design and also eliminate some unwanted uh, choices and uh, easier to manufacture and uh, we can limit the variance and it is also easier and for a completion process and uh, erection process and we can use some specialized documents whichever required per the site as per the site 